let's react to this uh um, this top 10 beauty youtubers launches <laughs> that went horribly wrong oh my goodness that went horribly wrong uh youtubers uh, youtubers they've been trying out you know then they've been experimenting sort of things this time around you know there's a lot of things going on okay okay no problem we got to you know we got to chill we got to chill let's check it out embarrassing i'm not gonna make it about myself in any way and tell you how I feel about this. Well, after researching the market for fragrances and their target audiences, I happened upon the census that was taken in 2018, which concluded that what Sweden is this? smells like East Is this, uh, what do they call it? Mongo, Monjo, Mo what? I don't even remember her name. <laughs> Mongo, Mo what? <laughs> to a 12 to 16 year old female demographic. Beauty launches are more popular than ever before with YouTube beauty gurus trying to maximize their coin by hopping on the Kylie Cosmetics bandwagon. But like, who can blame them? The girl's a billionaire. <laughs> like, I think I'd be copying a billionaire too. But with all the launches that happen, it's inevitable that there's gonna be a ton of flops. And the best part about these major launch fails is that there is a lot of tea that can be spilled. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's me slurping the tea. Slurp it up after it's been spilled. Okay, right, that right, is right. why today on IO, we are here to list the top 10 YouTuber beauty launches that went horribly wrong. Oh, I'm Mackenzie. Wow, wow. I'm Charlotte. And girl, grab a snack or something because this is about to be a long and wild ride. And if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe and turn on the bell so you never miss a video. Yeah. You don't want to miss so these faces. Horrible. No. We, horribly we are cute. <laughs> Oh, Starting really off with number 10, we have the Jane X Jeffree Star Cosmetics Conspiracy Palette. So as we all know, this was the launch that broke the internet. Like, <laughs> literally, they legit broke Shopify and it was Lots down for hours. Internet. So this is a launch that had so much hype around it that when the Seriously. launch time actually came, it felt like no one was actually able to get the products because of problems with the site. And let me tell you, I was actually one of the people trying to get the palette. So, are you, are you saying that they paid, but they did not get what they paid for? That's a scam. Oh my gosh. That's a big scam. And my excitement turned to anger real quick. Like, I don't think I've been that stressed since. <laughs> All of you that were also trying to buy it know that when you got on the site, only half the products were there. And then it took forever for it to get into your cart without the site crashing. And then if you got it in your cart and tried to check out, you might've been waiting for hours just to input your credit card info and pay. Like, just take my money, I'm trying to give it to you. I think I must've gotten to the payment part like four separate times before it just randomly kicked me off. So after this, people were super mad. They had to go through that incredible stress inducing experience when they followed the rules and were on the site when they were told to be. At number nine, Tana by Tana. Tana Mojo's breakout perfume, oh Tana God. by Tana, which Tana. comes in a clear Tana. Skull shaped bottle cost $48. It's supposed to smell like Tahitian vanilla, a base of citrus and subtle notes of argan oils. Get ready to be drenched in luxury, she wrote. I personally didn't see what all the criticism was about, but I guess people were pretty underwhelmed with this perfume. Number one, the bottle seems to be a cheap type of bottle that you can. Bro, this perfume is supposed to be $5 or $4. How much is she? Oh my god. She gonna. She gonna scam people on Get for like a few cents on AliExpress. Number two, the price was especially steep considering what the scent was inspired by. Tana also said that the scent was inspired by her poor upbringing and the cheap perfumes she used to buy were steel at Target, Walgreens, and French Vanilla. Not exactly luxurious. And the number three piece of criticism was the bottle and branding wasn't really cohesive with Tana's brand. It sort of looked like a knockoff of a perfume that you could get at Hot Topic. However, the perfume still sold out in a matter of minutes and as of right now, you what? still can't get your hands on it. Forty-eight dollars for what, bro? This is five dollar, five. So oh I guess it looks God. like this criticism does not stop sure, that coin from flowing. Gosh, so next gosh. in at number eight, we have the James Charles X Morphe palette number two. So after the incredibly successful launch of the first Morphe X James Charles palette, many fans were pumped when James announced almost a year later that he was gonna announce a second palette with Morphe. So after the much anticipated launch, fans were really confused when the release was just a mini version of the original palette. James said that the new launch had all the same colors, just in smaller sizes, and that it would make the palette 
tell it's smaller and easier to bring around and it would be much cheaper, which some of the fans were definitely pumped about. But he also got a ton of backlash for basically hyping it up so much and claiming that he worked for close to a year on it just for it to be practically the same thing. Fans also claimed that this looked like a super obvious money grab, something very low effort that Morphe and James knew would sell. But James clapped back in the best way possible, making fun of the launch and criticism by saying he was gonna launch a medium and then an XL version of the palette. <laughs> Number seven, the Jeffree Star Bloodlust palette. One thing is for sure, Jeffree Star's palettes are usually top notch. The guy knows makeup, what can I say? He knows what he's doing. But his latest palette launch, the Bloodlust palette, got more than its fair share of criticism. The Bloodlust palette is an 18 pan hexagon eyeshadow palette. Based on his Blue Blood palette, most people thought that the color story would be more, I don't know, purple. Take a look at the screenshot of the Blue Blood palette. The color story is blue, that's obvious. But based on how many pans were in the Bloodlust palette, many critics said that it should have been more purple. I mean, let me Count. I'm only counting like three, four purple shades. The rest are lilacs and magentas and like some random stuff thrown in there. So yeah, a little bit underwhelming on the purple side, especially considering how he advertised it. And also, when you see how people put up a mock-up of what the palette should have looked like, take a look at this tweet. Now that is a purple palette I would love to get my hands on. Especially that majesty color. Oh my god, give me that. Is that a real color? Can I have that? All the golds to complement the purples? Mm -hmm. Jeffrey responded to the criticism and said that he wanted to make a palette that could complement any pink, purple, magenta, and fuchsia. But he also says that he loves the palette, so to each his own. Next up at number six, we have Nikita Dragon's Dragon Beauty Launch. So Nikita joined the ever-growing list of YouTubers with beauty launches when she decided to launch her makeup brand, Dragon Beauty, back in 2019. She hyped it up a ton on her socials, telling people the launch would be iconic and not at all boring. But when it was finally launched, people were incredibly underwhelmed, as the brand only had three products. An orange color corrector, some face powders, and a face palette. There was also only one shade of all the products that were meant to be universal. But after the launch, people started to drag it on Twitter, with people very underwhelmed at the basic products, mad that she claimed the products were universal when they didn't look like they were, and that they were so expensive when you can get all the same products at the dollar store. As well, oh, people were calling oh, out oh. the powders for being really chalky. But like with most launches, the product- You know, there's a lot of YouTubers, you know, scamming, scamming people all around. For no reason yeah something can get in amazon five dollar four dollar then they're gonna they're gonna buy it they, they, they're gonna buy it from there then and and, and and sell everything each and sell it at around fifty dollars sixty seventy dollar for for what reason it's coming their fans bro this it's not cool bro Products did it's sell cool. well with the collection selling out in less than a day. But there was some lukewarm tea with her pop up shop that was taking place at the Beverly Center. Firstly, people didn't like that she photoshopped a poster at the mall to make it seem like she was bigger than she is. And people were just straight up confused that she was even having a pop up shop for a brand with three products. And when the day came, the turnout for the pop up shop was shockingly small, leading people to drag her online wow. some more. <laughs> Honestly, I kind of feel bad for her about that one. Halfway there at number five, it's Tati's Blendiful Puffs. In early January, 2020, Tati launched an $18 Tati. set of makeup puffs called Blendiful. They're washable puffs that you use to blend your makeup instead of like a beauty blender. People were raving about the quality and the finish and I almost bit the bullet. As someone who wants to be more environmentally conscious, this product seemed like a fantastic idea and there were hardly any other products like it on the market. The problem came when people tried to wash them. Customers oh. went on Twitter to complain that their oh. Blendifuls ripped apart at the seams after just one wash. Here's a couple of tweets. So Tati Beauty, I love my Blendiful but while simply washing it and not even that rough, it literally ripped at the seam. What can I do? I barely used it long and I don't think that is right. I was not rough with it at all. Next, I know some people have had issues with theirs tearing after the first wash. I haven't even washed it yet. Anybody had any success fixing this? That's I'm cute. sad because I love Tati and I really like it, but for $18, I expect it to last more than a day. Yeah, I feel like that's fair. Tati did not really respond to the criticism. She just apologized for not making a tutorial before it was released, addressing different complaints where people just didn't know how to use it. Then slide on into number four, Jeffree Star Cosmetics hey, Magic doing? Star Concealer. Another crazy I scandal hope. with launches happened when Jeffree Star was on the brink of releasing his Magic Star good, Concealer. Jeffree revealed in a video titled, My Concealer Line Was Stolen and Leaked, 2.5 million of makeup hijacked. That essentially the makeup mafia broke into one of his warehouses and stole 2.5 million dollars worth of the wow. new concealer. Star says in the video- Wow, 2.5 million. <laughs> oh, that's a huge box, bro. 
but that they stole wow. an entire shade of the product, making him unable to do a launch now. Then a few days later, it came out that the makeup was trying to be sold on the internet. An investigator he had hired found the first image of one of his products, a concealer that Star had not even announced yet, appeared on Facebook's marketplace. Law enforcement then tracked down the Facebook user and they are now facing the full oh. force of the legal system. Then after that, he had to recover the stolen products before the launch, which at that Yo. point was, of course, delayed. All right, and number three, we have the Kylie Cosmetics applicator. Kylie Jenner was forced to change the applicator of her lip glosses after customers and huge beauty gurus like Jeffree Star tweeted about their disappointment with the applicators. He tweeted, So I got the new Kylie Cosmetics lip glosses. So disappointed in this product. That wand is unacceptable. Jeffree wasn't the only one, and he actually went on a Twitter rant about the applicator. Apparently, people were receiving their products with smashed up, frayed, and damaged wands, and they came like that fresh out of the box. Not exactly a good look, and not a great way to start your brand. Anyways, Kylie actually took the criticism and promised to change the brush design and send her unhappy customers new brushes so they can actually use and enjoy their lip kits. And at number two, we have Kylie Skin. After Kylie had gained tons of success with her traditional makeup products like lipsticks and palettes, she decided to take even more of our money by launching Kylie Skin on May 22nd, 2019. However, even before the launch, people were incredibly skeptical. The first thing that caused tons of controversy was her walnut face scrub, which she was releasing as part of the line. After it was announced that the walnuts would be in the product, everyone pretty much lost their sh especially dermatologists, who claimed that the product was far too abrasive to be used on the skin. But after all the backlash, Kylie made a statement that it was safe and people just kind of let it slide. But then right after the launch, she posted well, a video to her Snapchat and Twitter of, money, of her bro. washing her face with the foaming face wash. And people had a lot of problems with this video. Firstly, people were pissed that she used a filter because come on, the whole point is to show how the product is working and she was basically making her skin look way better with a filter and not giving an accurate look at the product. Wow. Then secondly, at the very very end when she was drying her face with the towel she basically like scrubbed no, her no, face and then you can see do. so much makeup on the towel basically showing that her cleanser didn't do anything so after all this people still had problems saying that it was overpriced and the products were really subpar Jeffrey and Shane even made a video reviewing the product where they were low-key throwing shade the whole time so yeah she made tons of money but there were definitely plenty of bumps in the road on this one and now for the bumpiest road of all or shall we call it bumpy lipsticks at number one, Jaclyn Hill's lipsticks. I know we've talked about this launch a few times on this channel. This is without a doubt the worst beauty YouTuber launch ever in the history of beauty YouTuber launches. The worst. So I won't spend too much time reviewing it. We all know what happened. If you don't, basically Jaclyn Hill released highly anticipated lipsticks and they turned up with fibers, holes, lumps, plastic beads, and quite possibly even mold inside them. Many customers said the lipsticks turned up melted and squished. It was a disaster. Hey, quite possibly really the worst part of this disaster is how Jaclyn responded yeah, what's going on? So, hey, is that a fish or something? Six nine. How you doing? To her upset cool. customers. When the first negative reviews were coming out on social media, she shaded the customers instead of listening to them. But then even more and more complaints started coming out, and it became clear that this was not one isolated issue. It was a problem with the uh, whole uh, batch of lipsticks. She then made an angry response video where she essentially YouTube yelled launches. at her customers and explained wrong. that the lab workers had used Horribly fuzzy wrong. gloves, fuzzy gloves in a lab, which by the way was a debunked claim because in a video posted to her website, you can see the employee are wearing rubber gloves. In an update video posted after a seven month long hiatus, Jacqueline explained that her first launch was a fail and it's up. She said, I did not have a quality control team big enough to handle what I was doing. And it's important that you guys know how sorry and embarrassed I am. She said she fired a lot of people over the failed launch and she hired a bunch of new people. She also built an entire quality control team. No one really knows what went wrong. Marlena Stell said that she warned Jacqueline about the lab she enlisted to make her products. Apparently it's not the greatest. I still don't understand how there could be so many problems with one batch of lipsticks. <laughs> yeah, it was debunked. It was, it was fully debunked because she had a video on her website of the and like yeah, it was like a promo video of her like in the lab making the lipsticks. And like you look at the employees and they're all wearing rubber gloves. People, why are we still buying her products? Like not trying to shade. I'm sure she's a nice woman, but it's sad because like those lipsticks looks really they looked yeah, really they nice. Looked good. I they looked really nice. They're the greatest. Yeah. Yeah. It's kinda too bad, but Anyways, what did you think of this list, guys? Uh, did we miss anything? I feel like maybe, I could we do a part two? I think we probably could. I mean, the YouTuber launches are just so messy in general. They don't even have to be beauty. They can be anything, really. Yeah, Merch. so yeah, let us know. Let us know in the comments yeah. if you wanna see a part two. This album is about scam. Top 10 beauty YouTubers launches that went horribly wrong. Y'all should be careful because there's a lot of YouTubers, you know, scamming their fans all the time. Oh, because, oh money. You know, there's a lot of people can do anything to get what they want because of money. Hey, how you doing, Jones?
Jones Line or what they call Jones Line and Jones Liner. How you doing? Man, I'm okay. I'm real. I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm good. And you? Wow. It's crazy, though. It's crazy. There's a lot of things going on. Yeah, that's cool. It's good to hear. We are home chilling. We are home chilling. 